OEM computers pose some pretty serious security risks. More passwords have been owned than ever before. Have 100 grand to spend? There's a zero day for that and so much more. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for June 1st, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, our main podcast, Hack5, is up for a podcast award. So if you are a fan of Hack5 or a member of Diamond Club, check hat.t2t2.eu for a whole slew of podcasting friends that we are voting for. I've never tried to win an award for Hack5, but some of our friends nominated us, so we figured we would give it a shot. I mean, heck. We've been doing the show for 10 years, so uh, why not? <laughs> on to the news. First being about laptops and PCs. Do you own a laptop from Dell, HP, Acer, Lenovo, or Asus? All of these laptop manufacturers, or OEMs for short, have serious security flaws in their built-in update processes, straight from the warehouse. The team at Duo Security conducted an investigation into these OEMs to find out what kind of vulnerabilities are exploitable. A full PDF file of the report has been posted on Duo.com. The gist of it is that these manufacturers ship their laptops and PCs with pre-installed updaters, which is completely normal, all of which have at least one flaw that could enable remote code execution attacks on a victim computer. An easy to understand guide is available to view showing that Dell was more secure than Acer and Asus and Lenovo has both a terrible security practice and a really good one depending on which software was chosen to be used. Digitally signing their listings of files was missing from most of the vendors, which an attacker can use to their advantage to start a man-in-the-middle attack against a victim. Some OEMs did not send updates over HTTPS, while Dell did send over HTTPS while also signing certificates. On the other side of the coin, Asus sends unsigned file lists called manifests over plain HTTP with an easily decrypted key. Now, while Dell, HP, and Lenovo had reachable support who answered the questions of the researchers and have already or are working towards implementing fixes, Acer and Asus have failed to release any fixes. This study highlights a huge problem with OEM software. Unnecessary programs on a new computer come pre-installed with security problems out of the box, i.e. bloatware. The best way to mitigate the problem, anytime you get a new computer, just completely wipe the crap out of it and reinstall your operating system of choice with zero bloatware. If you had an account with MySpace, LinkedIn, Tumblr, or Fling a few years ago, you might want to make sure that you haven't been using that same password on multiple sites. So here's the thing. Each of these breaches happened in the early 2010s. Fling was in 2011, LinkedIn in 2012, Tumblr in 2013, and then MySpace happened sometime between 2007 and 2012. So this means that the millions of passwords that were stolen were sitting in the dark until May of 2016, and there were over 600 million passwords stolen, when all four breaches were up for grabs on the dark web. So that happened in May. Now, obviously, our first means of defense is to ensure that your password is different on each and every site that you use. And if you still own any of those accounts, just, you know, change your password as soon as possible. Now, in a blog post on Monday, the owner of HaveIBeenPwned.com, and that's owned with a P, Troy Hunt noticed patterns between each of these different four hacks, age, size, and release timing, and it brings up an unsettling thought. There could easily be more breaches from that time period that haven't gone public. So are websites aware of the breaches and just not sharing the information with their users? Or are they completely unaware that these events are happening on their servers? Either way, it's kind of bad. On May 11th, Trustwave Security Services noticed a seller named Buggy Corp selling a zero day for Windows PCs on the dark web for $90,000. This zero day vulnerability is said to have the ability to give admin rights to an attacker on any Windows 2000 up to Windows 10 machine even with a fully patched operating system. Now, while this could be a total fake, the seller offered an independent escrow agent through the forum to verify it, that it works before payment is actually made. Now, he or she 
also includes two videos showing the zero day in action, allowing local privilege escalation on a Windows PC. Now, Microsoft currently knows about the sale, and while they haven't attempted to actually buy the zero day, they have notably stressed their bug bounty program, which pays out up to $100,000, which is up from $50,000. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from this and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire and we may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in our next episode because they are adorable we appreciate you sending them in if you are on that perk level and we love seeing the cats and the dogs and the fluffy bunnies and whatever the heck else you feel like sending us just make sure it's safe for work yeah, that's kind of important. We rebooted ThreatWire about one year ago. Can you believe that it's already been that long? Yeah, it has. And we are going really strong. Our next goal is gonna allow us to purchase a podcast host for RSS, which means that we will be able to add the show to iTunes and all of your favorite Android podcasting apps. I know it's really important, so consider contributing over at Patreon. A like, a share, a subscribe, all of that goes a long way. And it also gets our viewers up. And make sure to vote for Hack5 hat.t2.t no hat.t2t2.eu. <laughs> I keep on getting that website wrong. Threatwire.net for all of the things. And with that, I am Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet. Hat.t2t2.eu. Hat.t2t2.eu. <laughs>